Hello. From all things renal to all things penal, welcome to the Canuck Podcasts. This is a series of podcasts for medical students designed by the Canadian Undergraduate Urology Curriculum and done through the support of the Canadian Urological Association. The goal of this series of podcasts is to provide medical students throughout Canada with a solid foundation of urologic knowledge. In this episode, Dr. Keith Rourke from the University of Alberta will be discussing how to assess the patient who has blood in the urine. After listening to this podcast, learners will be able to discuss the different types of hematuria and the possible sources of the bleeding in the urinary tract. Learners will also be able to highlight the parts of the history and physical examination which are most important in assessing the patient with hematuria. Finally, listeners will be able to describe the range of tests that are available to assess the patient with this symptom. You may ask yourself, why is hematuria important? Well, for two reasons. Number one, hematuria can occur in up to 10% of the population. Number two, hematuria is one of the cardinal signs of urologic disease. Hematuria can be a sign that there's something significantly wrong in the urinary tract. So what is hematuria? Well, hematuria can be two types. The first is called gross hematuria, which simply put is visible blood in the urine. Number two is microscopic hematuria, which is microscopic red blood cells detected in the urine. Microscopic hematuria is typically defined as greater than three red blood cells per high-powered field detected on two or three serial urinalysis. When hematuria is identified, it typically indicates an up to 10% chance that urologic malignancy exists in the urinary tract. Blood in the urine can indicate any significant urologic disease from the kidneys, down the ureters, through the bladder, either involving the prostate or also the urethra. When hematuria is detected, we are required to evaluate the entire urinary tract. Gross hematuria at any age, generally speaking, requires a full urologic evaluation. Microscopic hematuria requires full urologic evaluation, typically when a patient is over the age of 40. In some instances, people under the age of 40 do require full urologic evaluation. Those patients would be people with a risk factor for urologic malignancy. Those risk factors include any history of tobacco use, history of any chemical exposure, specifically cyclophosphamides, certain benzenes or aromatic amines, history of pelvic irradiation, such as patients who have had cervical cancer treatment or history of prostate cancer treated with external beam radiation, patients who present predominantly with irritative voiding symptoms, such as urinary frequency, significant urinary urgency or nocturia, also history of urologic disease such as bladder cancer would be a, a concurrent risk factor. This hematuria can be a sign of nephrologic disease. Some findings on urinalysis that may lead you more toward a nephrologic diagnosis would include proteinuria, dysmorphic red blood cells, or white or red blood cell casts. Generally speaking, when hematuria is present, though, one must rule out urologic disease. The easiest way to think of hematuria and its evaluation is to think of the urinary system as two parts. Part one would be the upper urinary tract, consistent of the kidneys and ureters. The lower urinary tract would, of course, consist of the bladder, prostate, and urethra. Causes of upper tract hematuria would include kidney cancer or any significant urologic malignancy involving the kidney. Also, history of urinary calculus disease or any history of pyelonephritis or concurrent hydronephrosis all could be causes of hematuria originating from the upper tract. Hematuria arising from the lower urinary tract can be caused by bladder cancer, and this is one of the predominant diseases we see causing hematuria, bladder calculus disease, BPH, urethral stricture disease, significant bacterial cystitis, or even in some cases urethritis could cause significant hematuria. As mentioned, people with gross hematuria almost always require a full urologic evaluation. Patients with microscopic hematuria may not always require a complete urologic evaluation, but patients over 40, generally speaking, need both investigations of their upper and lower urinary tract. Patients with risk factors for urologic disease with microscopic hematuria, regardless of age, would require a full investigation of the urinary tract. First step in evaluation 
would be a, a proper and thorough history. On history, it would be nice to inquire about avoiding dysfunction, specifically does someone have a lot of frequency, urgency, or significant nocturia. These are called irritative or storage-related voiding symptoms. It could sometimes indicate significant intravesical pathology. In addition, we should inquire about the presence of gross hematuria, the presence of any significant blank pain, history of pyelonephritis, history of calculus disease. Also, a history of trauma to either the flanks or lower abdomen could injure the urinary tract significantly enough to cause hematuria. In addition, inquiring about a family history of prostate cancer, as well as any history of tobacco use, history of cyclophosphamide exposure, or history of pelvic radiation, or history of any significant chemical exposure. In some instances, hematuria can actually be mimicked by several benign conditions. Women who are menstruating can have a false positive on your analysis. People who are ingesting one too many beets can have a red discoloration of their urine. In some instances, like myoglobinuria, an ingestion of certain compounds like pyridamine can cause a discoloration of the urine and actually not be a true hematuria. If any doubt arises, one can repeat the urinalysis. After a history, the next step in evaluation would be that of a focused physical examination. Generally speaking, one should examine the abdomen, specifically looking for any renal mass or abdominal mass, significant costal vertebral angle tenderness, which can indicate renal obstruction. One should also examine the lower abdomen to see if the bladder is palpable, if there's any significant suprapubic tenderness. One should also examine the external genitalia, to look for any abnormalities of the urethral meatus, to look for any induration along the course of the urethra, and examine the scrotum for any significant intrascrotal pathology, such as testicular mass or significant varicocele. Lastly, one should perform a digital rectal examination. This will help uh, rule out any significant concurrent prostate diseases, such as BPH, significant prostate nodularity suggestive of prostate cancer, or any significant prostate tenderness. All these conditions could contribute to the diagnosis of hematuria. Once you've talked to and examined the patient, uh, several other investigations are required. Mandatory investigations would include, include investigations of the upper urinary tract. In most instances, radiographic imaging can rule out any significant upper tract urologic disease. The literature does have several options available. Uh, in Canada, for the most part, we would pursue a well-performed renal ultrasound. This would rule out any significant renal mass lesion, rule out any significant urinary calculus disease, hydronephrosis, or in general, any renal abnormality, such as complicated cysts or other significant pathology. If the renal ultrasound shows any significant abnormalities, one could then go on to a CT scan of the abdomen, with contrast, MRI, or any other imaging one would see fit. In general, a renal ultrasound is a good start toward the evaluation of the upper urinary tract in the setting of hematuria. Many would argue in the setting of gross hematuria or significant risk factors for urologic disease, a CT of the abdomen and pelvis with contrast or intravenous pyelography could help rule out any significant occult urethelial lesion. But as mentioned, for the most part, a renal ultrasound properly done is an excellent start when investigating the upper urinary tract. Lower urinary tract also requires evaluation. Unfortunately, radiographic investigations in general cannot rule out significant intravesical pathology. Because of this, patients requiring evaluation for hematuria need to have a cystoscopy. Cystoscopy is the gold standard for ruling out any significant lower urinary tract abnormality. In general, with cystoscopy, we can evaluate the entire urethra as well as the bladder, and in some instances we can cannulate the ureter orifice for the purpose of performing a retrograde polygram or even selective cytologies from the upper urinary tract. Other investigations we use uh, selectively would include a urine cytology, which is essentially an examination of the urine looking for any abnormal or dystrophic cells. Urine cytology is a poorly sensitive test and is generally not a good screening tool. However, if a urine cytology does come back positive, this is a very specific test. 
Meaning, if a urine cytology does show abnormal cells, one must be very aware of the possibility of urologic malignancy, and one should ensure that the entire urinary tract is evaluated thoroughly. A urine culture can rule out any occult urinary tract infection that could be responsible for the hematuria. If after all the investigations are performed, there's no significant urologic disease identified, then the patients can have what's called essential hematuria, which essentially is microscopic blood in the urine uh, with no identifiable cause. Some patients do require further follow-up. The patient should develop recurrent gross hematuria, voiding dysfunction, or any other symptoms suggestive of urologic disease. This should prompt uh, repeat investigations. In addition, if a patient should develop renal dysfunction, hypertension, significant proteinuria, then one should consider referral to a nephrologist to rule out any significant medical renal disease. I should also say that there's no current study that suggests screening an asymptomatic population for hematuria is of any benefit. However, uh, urinalysis should be done in the setting of any significant urologic symptoms rule out the presence of hematuria. If hematuria is present, obviously someone requires evaluation, but in an asymptomatic individual, there's no literature or evidence to suggest any benefit. To summarize, hematuria is a significant urologic condition. When blood in the urine is identified, 10% of patients can have urologic malignancy. Typically, people with gross hematuria require evaluation of their entire urinary tract, as do people with microscopic hematuria over the age of 40. Typically, investigation of the upper urinary tract is performed by radiographic studies. In most cases, a well-performed renal ultrasound can relate significant urologic disease of the upper urinary tract. However, the lower urinary tract does require cystoscopic assessment to rule out intravesical pathology. Cystoscopy is the current gold standard for ruling out lower urinary tract. The bottom line is hematuria when present should not be ignored and should be investigated further because there is about a 10% chance significant urologic problem. That concludes this episode. We hope you found it enjoyable and informative. If you would like to provide your comments or feedback on what you heard, please email us at corporate.address at cua.org. Please remember that other episodes in the series can be found at the website of the Canadian Urological Association at www.cua.org. Thanks for listening to the Canuck Podcasts.